What a party. What fun. Hello, fellow reformers. It's fantastic to see so many of you here. Many of you will have been here on the 30th of June yeah. during the general election campaign. They said it couldn't be done. They said we might get one. We got five. Yeah. Thanks to you and 4.1 million other people across our great United Kingdom. And firstly, I just want to reiterate the thanks to all of you being here. It's incredible. The time, the money, the commitment that you give. And we've achieved and we are achieving something absolutely extraordinary. In my own constituency that no one forecast could be won, I overturned the biggest ever Conservative majority of 25 and a half thousand people. And that And that was with your help, with the constituents' help, but also, in particular, the help of my brilliant team who are here today, led by the amazing Ryan and Co. Please give them a round of applause. Now, it's quite a moment. It's quite a moment arriving in the House of Commons, being led by, some might call him our chief whip, but the truth is, the great Lee Anderson, wasn't he good earlier? My word, wow. <laughs> Our Lee, he's a brilliant tour guide. Absolutely brilliant. The House of Parliament, big place. He said, don't worry, lads. There's only three important places. The chamber, the bar, and the smoking terrace. Now, importantly, I'm not going to tell you in which order he thought was most priority. Um, but I have to tell you, it is quite a moment as you go into the chamber, which is much smaller than anybody can believe. And the last thing you see as you go into the chamber is that statue looking down on you, wishing you luck, and wishing you belief in our great nation. Yes, the statue of Sir Winston Churchill. It sends a shiver up my spine every time I go past. And we've had some fun in the chamber. I've spoken about 16 times, and we've been holding this government to account. And there's all sorts of procedures. You have to bob up and down like a yo-yo. God, I sat there for four and a half hours, bobbing up and down. And Lee tell us, tells us what to do, the brilliant Lee. And let me tell you, you know, we talk about thanks. But when Lee Anderson had the courage, the conviction, the passion, and the belief to make that huge leap, when he looked me in the eye back in February, he shook my hand and he said, Richard, let's do it. We did it, and that was the moment. Absolutely vital. Now, this conference, putting this on, doesn't just happen. And talking of thanks, the next speaker, our new chairman, is doing a brilliant job. Without Zia Youssef, this would not have happened without his incredible team. Zia, many, many thanks. Incredible. And of course, when the great man speaks shortly, you know, my thanks to Nigel for saying, yes, I'm going to do it. We're going to go for it, and we're going to save Britain. And that is huge. Now, here we are. Do you remember back in January, I, I, I came across this funny word, Starmageddon. <laughs> Even the Daily Mail's now latched onto it. The issue is, I didn't realise after 11 weeks of Labour government, we'd be talking about Starmageddon on steroids. <laughs> now, I must declare an interest here. It's important to declare this interest. I have paid for my own suit. <laughs> Who knew? I don't know, what do I call him? Do I call him Sponger Starmer? Do I call him Scrounger Starmer? Do I call him Free Gear Kia? Yeah. Or, or do I call him 
Stormer, the Granny Harmer. <laughs> unbelievable what he's already doing to our country. Truly unbelievable. As it is, unbelievable. I mean, 22,000 pensioners in my constituency of Boston and Skegness, you can see on the screens behind, 22,000 pensioners had their winter fuel allowance taken away from them. Elizabeth shook my hand and burst into tears of fear. It's an absolute disgrace what this Labour government is doing to our pensioners and to our country. It's also, it's also an absolute disgrace what the establishment have done to our country over the last 10 years. They've come across three, well, they've imposed on us, the British people, three cults. The first one was the cult of mass immigration. They told us it was a brilliant idea, it would be good for us. Really? How's it going, folks? <laughs> Eight million later, do we feel better off? Do we feel that our public services are working better? And I tell you what, last week was a really important week in our country. Last week, all of these three cults were exposed for the fraud, the con, and the lie that they are. Last week alone, the Office for Budget Responsibility, that great institution that Rachel Thieves loves, <laughs> the Office for Budget Responsibility admitted that actually low-skilled migrants never contribute to our country more than they take out. But we've been told the opposite for decades. The great lie exposed of mass immigration being a benefit to the United Kingdom. The second cult, this sort of new religion that we, we had to bow down to, and if you don't, you're a dreadful person. If you don't bow down to these religions, you know, if you want to express concern about immigration, no, you're a bigot, and we'll cancel you. Well, if you don't bow down to the cult of the NHS, then you're a bad person, we're going to cancel you. Apparently you want to privatise it. No, we don't. We just want a healthcare system that works in our country. Thank you very much. Even a lovely lady here earlier came up to me and said, I'm a retired nurse. And she said, you're so right. When you spoke to Wes Streeting in the House of Commons last week, after this Lord Darcy report exposed again the great lie that the NHS is the envy of the world. Tragically, it's not. The truth is the outcomes and the performance and the waiting lists are amongst the worst in the world. The great lie was exposed last week. The good news is Wes Streeting, the health secretary, he agreed with me in the House of Commons when I said, the NHS needs reform. <laughs> the truth is the country needs reform. Now, so that's the second cult that has been exposed last week. But the third cult that I want to focus on is the cult, this new religion of net zero. Oh, God. I mean, honestly. But it was all exposed last week, wasn't it? And then there's my new best friend. I'm only joking. Ed Mad Miliband. He is, in this, in this extreme cult of net zero, he is the chief zealot. He really is. He's absolutely obsessed. In the chamber, he's like a man possessed. I actually had to leave the chamber. My blood was boiling. It's unbelievable. He wants to cover all our farmland. My constituency of fertile land, he wants to cover it with solar panels. He doesn't care about blighting the countryside with hundreds and thousands of huge 50-metre pylons, including across my constituency. This man is a danger to our economy. He's the most dangerous man in Britain to our economy today. <laughs> last, week, last week, we had thousands of jobs sacrificed on the altar of net zero in Port Talbot. The business secretary had to admit that he agreed with me. We have a problem with our energy prices, our electricity prices. Yes, we absolutely do, because of the madness of net zero. That's the reason that those jobs are being destroyed. That's the reason the 400 plus jobs have gone in the Grangemouth refinery that's being closed, announced also last week. Absolute insanity. There's thousands more jobs 
going to go, sadly, in Scunthorpe. And then we had the other news. Yes, they're not going to proceed with the coal mine in the northwest. Hundreds more jobs lost. And there's a reason we're going up in the polls in the wonderful nation of Scotland. And that's because the oil and gas industry is terrified about the destruction of those jobs there. As you can tell, I've got to be honest, I'm pretty wound up about this. It may have come across. So, quite right, sir. Are you wound up about this? Yes! Excellent. We're all on track. Yo. They are, it's, it's all, it's, it's, it's unbelievable what's going on. And when you travel to other nations who have been lucky enough to enjoy, like we do, oil and gas energy treasure, do you know what they're doing? They're all extracting oil and gas as fast as they can. In the Middle East, nations like the UAE, Qatar, Bahrain, in the US, in Asia. And let me tell you, when you read their newspapers and you watch their TV, there are two words they didn't talk about. Their eyes on the phone. <laughs> they never mention the words net zero. Do you know what they're doing? They're laughing at our naive stupidity. Absolutely laughing as they steal our jobs and our money. They cannot believe. They cannot believe the negligence of our establishment. We've got all this energy treasure under our feet, Lee mentioned it, oil, gas, shale gas. And yet, brilliant. Hundreds of billions of pounds worth owned by all of us. And yet, no, I tell you what, folks, this is a really good financial idea. Let's leave it there. For God's sake. I mean, honestly, it's utter madness. It's negligent. It's outrageous, and I tell you what, here's a good reason to win the next general election. And under Nigel and Zia's leadership, I believe, I know, and with your help, I know that we will. The first thing we should do when we win the next general election, folks, is to scrap net zero. <laughs> And I tell you what, I'm putting all of those people on notice, every single one of you, all of you, are receiving subsidies from us, the taxpayer, for all these net zero projects. The moment we scrap net zero, all of these subsidies, they stop. End of terminato finito. So, hello, that's the establishment cutting me off. They don't like what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what's going on. Extraordinary. We have to do this. We have to win. You heard wonderful words from Ant Middleton just before lunch, talking about our great country, the foundation based on Christianity, the fact that, sure, we can welcome smart immigration, but all, all those who come here, who want to enjoy the benefits of this great nation, you do so by playing by our rules, our game, <laughs> including... And we have that sense of fair play. When people say, what do you mean by the British culture, the British sense of value? I always go back to that sense of cricket, that sense of fair play. And Lee talked about the great sports that we invented, like so many other things. I could go on and on, but time is pressing, Zia's waiting, Nigel's waiting, but let's just finish with a message of optimism, of hope. I believe we can save this great country, do you? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Can we win the next general election? Yeah. Then let's do it, thank you very much.